All right. My name is Tracy Miller Zarnicki, and I want to welcome everyone to the Animations Film Festival. And specifically, for those of you who have taken time to watch this special collection of short films, I'm welcoming you to the program created with care and collaboration between Annecy and Women in Animation to share a wonderful uh, celebration of women filmmakers. So I'm, I'm thrilled to be moderating this discussion today with some of the filmmakers in this collection. And, and I'm honored actually to have served on the board of Women in Animation for the past, I think it's seven years now as its chair of Legacy and Archives. As you know, we uh, envision a world where women and all underrepresented genders share equally in the creation, production and rewards of animation. And we provide the resources and connections to make it happen. And you've probably heard about our overarching goal to reach 50-50 creative representation in our industry by 2025. And on that path to gender balance, we align with a number of marginalized groups to support their voices being heard. And that provides richer, more authentic storytelling across this wide tapestry of life and experiences in the world. And so along those lines, of we as supporting those voices being heard, that effort circles us back to where we are with this event. And a few examples of the creators who have worked so hard to share their voices each through their unique storytelling lens are with us today. So enough for me, let's meet them now. And I will call on each of them to take a moment to introduce themselves. And um, I'll do my best not to uh, mangle the pronunciation of their name or their film. And I'll let them do that themselves properly. I'm gonna start with, I think the easiest one for me to say, Joanna Quinn is here with her film Affairs of the Art. So Joanna, I'll turn it over to you for a moment. Okay, yes, I'm Joanna Quinn, and I'm an animator and animation director, and we have a company in Wales in the UK, and uh, we make films and do adverts as well. And so, yeah, Affairs of the Art is the fourth film starring our character Beryl, who's this sort of working class, middle-aged, large lady, and uh, yeah, so <laughs> that's, that's me. Wonderful. Thank you for being here with us. And next, let's go ahead and meet Marine Blin, who has shared what resonates in silence. And, and again, she's going to properly say her name and the proper title of her film in its language. So I'll turn it over to you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Marine Blin, and I'm the writer and director of Ce qui résonne dans le silence. Uh, it's my first actual uh, professional and personal movie. Uh, I did some commission before, but it's my first really intimate one. And uh, I'm working in a little studio in north of France called Studio Train Train. And uh, I'm a te technician as well. And we are working on lots of uh, short movies uh, with great directors. So that's me. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you for joining us today. And now we'll meet uh, Stephanie Lansac, uh, whose film, The Awakening of the Insects, but she'll say it properly in her in, in its native language, um, will uh, introduce herself. Yeah. Hi, I'm Stephanie Lansac, and uh, I co-directed the Le Réveil des Insects in French with uh, François Leroy, and we've been co-directing already five short movie, five short animated movie for the last 20 years. So nice to meet you. Wonderful. Great to have you here with us, everybody. So um, I have a series of questions and what I'll do is I'll call on each of you to take turns going first. So I hope you don't mind. We'll just roll right into it now. Um, but I really have to say, first of all, from, you guys are all over the world. I love this silver lining of this pandemic thing. Um, the switch to virtual programming is awesome for this reason. We can be together even though we're all over the world. So yay, thank you for figuring yes. out time zones and being here. It's amazing. Um, all right, let's dive in with our first question. So let's say, let's ask the global start is from where or how did the concept of your film originate? So on this, we'll start with Joanna. Okay, well, our, our film Affairs of the Art um, 
I suppose, I mean, it's a standalone film, but it is the fourth film with the Beryl character in it. And I think it came about because um, Beryl's character, she she's always trying to achieve something and, and sort of um, um, fails or, 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 or does it or successfully, but in her own way, you know. And in the last film, um, she... Uh, learned how to use a camera and explored uh, filmmaking and was asked to film a friend's wedding and it was a disaster because she got drunk and oh anyway but uh, but it was all about her trying to enrich herself and learn all about filmmaking and then we had a big break and people were saying oh we really want another barrel film you know and um because I think people quite like her character because there aren't many <laughs> women protagonists you know in animation so uh, we thought, oh, but I think because we'd done three films already, we were sort of, we weren't that, not, not, not that keen, but I think for us, not the audience, it, you know, it takes a long time to do it. And uh, so we weren't as keen as everybody else. But then we thought, well, what we could do with this film is bring in more of her family so that we see more of her character, because you know what it's like when you meet somebody, you think you know them, and then you see their family and you go, Oh, I understand now. That's why they're like they are. So um, by bringing in her sister and her husband and her son, um, I think we see different facets of her, her character. And in this film, she wants to become an artist. So um, that's sort of how it came about. And I work closely with my partner, Les Mills. So he's the writer and I'm the drawer um and yeah so we're we're a team so he he wrote the script years ago and I took very long to finally animate it and finish it <laughs> poor script writers <laughs> well thank you Joanna yeah you know it, that is the thing the words sometimes come <laughs> a lot more quickly than all the art that that, that <laughs> creates the world but you know what that's okay that's part of the the joy of animation it's a it's a it's a labor of love, right? It I is. mean, that's it that's is. a thing. So definitely. Well, well, I'm glad that you guys brought Barrel back and 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 shared more. So <laughs> great. Um, um, let's go to Marina. Let's hear from you and and your origins. Yeah, for for me, the the first time I was um, working on this project, it was um, actually the discovery for me of the uh, the practice of automatic writing. And uh, I did uh, I did some uh, works on uh, paintings by René Magritte, and I remember two different paintings with a little uh, pair of leather shoes and uh, blonde hair coming out of them, and um, I wrote the monologue of a woman uh, preparing a body for the last time, and I feel the the love and the kindness she took with all the little things she did for her. And I wanted to portray this kind of intimacy with somebody who is quite a stranger and how you can build a, an image with love uh, in this kind of environment. So it was really the, the base of the movie. And after I did lots and lots of other works <laughs> to to try to convey the story of this woman and knowing where she came from and why she's doing this in her life because it's a weird choice of career for lots of people. So I thought about how you can be affected in your life by, by your past experiences and how you can um, choose a path of resilience in a way to do something beautiful for others. So, yeah. That was the base of the story for me. That's, that's wonderful. Thank you for thank you for sharing that. Oh look, we thank have you. a special guest who's come in. Yay! Andrea made it after all. Woo -hoo. I'll, I'm going to circle Andrea. back to you. I'll, I'll circle back to you in just a moment, Andrea. Let me, um, yeah. I, I, we're in the middle of a question, so we'll circle through these. We'll let Stephanie answer her part, and then we'll come back and properly welcome you in. So this is the early welcome. Hi, glad to see you, and then we'll be right back. Okay. Stephanie is going to tell us now about like the concept or origin of her film project. Yeah, actually that movie takes place in uh, Hong Kong and I'm living part-time in uh, Vietnam and in France. 
So I've been traveling to Hong Kong many, many times. And when I've been there, I saw that woman, there is a bridge in uh, Canal Street. And under, the, under that bridge, there is some woman, some kind of uh, exorcist or fortune teller, we don't really know. But I mean, I saw, saw them so many times that I think I should do something about them. And so it's that idea and at the same time in my family, some people had dementia. So I, I wanna talk about it, but not my personal situation, but I, I wanna try to find something more universal. So I try to mix the two ideas together. And then later we making the movie and the situation in Hong Kong, the political situation and get really bad. So. We thought we should find a way to find a small space in the movie for that too. So we also try to figure out how we can do it. So that's the story of the movie. <laughs> that's great. And see, now that's part of why if animation takes a long time, you can incorporate <laughs> changes later, right? You have that's that true. window. So yeah, you, you have to sometimes, yeah. Uh, exactly. Another, another benefit of the long loving process. Yeah, that's true. So I'm going to circle back now. Is it Andrea or Andrea? Because we haven't met before and I, want to, I don't want to mis mispronounce your name. Yeah, it's Andrea. Okay, well, Andrea yeah. is joining us today. She has a film, How to Be at Home, that's in our collection. We're so excited you were able to join us. Um, if you want to just take a moment to introduce yourself and then answer the question, where did the concept or origin of, of your film come from? Then we'll be all caught up. Okay. So yay, the timing is great. I'm, uh, first of all, I'm really sorry I'm late. I found out about this quite late. So anyway, here I am. Um, I am, a, my name is Andrea Dorfman. I am from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. And I, uh, among many things, I would say I'm an artist. I do animation, but I also make other kinds of films, um, documentary, feature films. Uh, I do illustration. Um, so yeah, I do a whole, I feel I work sometimes as a cinematographer. So I, I'm very, um, I guess I'm sort of a hybrid. I do a lot of different things. I've never wanted to specialize in anything, I guess. And because of that, I think I'm not really good at anything either. I just, uh, kind of skip along, um, the surface and, uh, yeah. And so I'm here because, um, a film I made uh, titled How to Be at Home, who, and it was uh, based on a poem written by Tanya Davis, made during the pandemic. And uh, so the title is self-explanatory, How to Be at Home. And here we are. Wonderful. I'm well, glad to have you here with us, even though you're probably also there at home. So it's great. See, it all comes yeah. down there. So, okay, good. All right. Well, let's jump into our next question for the group. Um, this is about emotions and the balance of emotions. So, so I want you to share with the audience what the message or emotion you hope your film delivers to its audience. Um, and they're all, your films are all quite different. So, you know, you can talk about how you balance humor or sadness or shock value or whatever emotional range you explored. How did you work that into your, what you hope is your audience experience and, and you know, to, to what end? So, with that one, let's see if uh, maybe Stephanie could begin for us. Sure. Yeah, actually, I'm not really into messages in, in my movie. I prefer to share emotion. And men, maybe my main influence for that is uh, David Lynch. He said that um, all of his movies have a logic, but what is important is not his logic, but the logic of the people watching it. So I also like to do that. I like the people to interpret the movie the way they, they want, the way they feel it. So in that movie, it's kind of difficult because we talk about the old man losing his memory and we want, really want to go into his head and see the world through his eyes. So, in a way, the film has to be chaotic and maybe sometimes it's difficult to follow, but really the way we want, want it to be. And also 
as I said, um, we made that movie because some people in our family, they were going through some dementia problems. So we also want to get a revenge on the real world because the real world was pretty hard and pretty sad. So we want to give some kind of a optimistic optimistic hand to our movie so we can get a re revenge on the real world. I think all that worked very <laughs> nicely. Excellent. Okay, let's let's see if Marina wants to share with us now the uh, the emotional arc or the message, however you want to go with that. Yeah, um, the met the message is a really strong word for me. I, I'm not uh, as uh, Stephanie said uh, uh, really true about uh, a precise message in a movie. Uh, for me, it's more about uh, beginning a, a conversation uh, with. Uh, ourselves and with others. So uh, it's more how we can relate to each other talking about our own experiences. And so for me, um, the film is not, uh, even with the subject, it's not dark, it's not sad. For me, I, I see it with uh, a kind of uh, uh, light at the end because uh, it's uh, something, uh, made for, for some other people. So for me, it's really about letting the spectator have a place in the movie to be able to reflect on his own experience. And maybe the great thing is at the end, you can have maybe a conversation or discussion with some people with some images coming back to you. And, and if you want to share this kind of experience, it's great. And, um, and it's also, I think, because uh, our relation to death and grief, and grief is becoming more and more uh, kind of a taboo, I think, in, in our society. You have to hide the, the dead body, you have to hide the, the sickness, the deadness. So yeah, it's, it was important for me to have a space to explore that and to, to say that it's, it's okay to have a choice and it's okay to grieve in your own manner and to share that all together. So, yeah. That's great, thank you. Yes, very deep subject to, to dive into and explore. Um, Andrea, will you share with us? Sure, I, uh, it's interesting because it, the approach for, for this film I did is a bit different because it was written beforehand. And so when I received the, it was a poem, in some ways I have to find meaning from that I can sort of uh, use as a place to begin animating. And so when I received the poem, which is so beautiful and it could just be, it didn't even need a film. It was such a beautiful poem. It could just stand alone. And, uh, and yet I guess, adding animation to it can allow it to go somewhere else. And so the process for me is finding, you know, I sit with the poem for a long time and I go th through it, I read it again and again, and I, and then I step away and just see what images come. And, and I think that for me is the, the real, the intersection of the poetry and, and myself where where perhaps that's where the meaning for me anyway begins. And then I, and I, and I don't storyboard or anything. I just start and see where it takes me. And, uh, and I think when, you know, like a lot of art and, and I think um, the other filmmakers have already spoken to this, then there's another layer of meaning that people bring to it when they receive it, which we can never know. And, and that's sort of the fun discovery of, talking to audience members or, or anybody who sees it. So, and then, and then you get to receive that back. So I don't know, that was a little bit all over the place. But. <laughs> no, it, it was perfectly fine. And yeah, that is the one thing that if we can't be at the film festivals in person, you might not get it, but I hope that, you know, fans can still reach out to you all from wherever they are and communicate some of this. Cause yeah, I think knowing how your work touches different people so differently is, is, has to be a very special part of the experience. So, yeah. And Joanna, will you tell us about, you know, the emotion of your project? 
yeah, for the message? I, su I suppose um, what we like to do is to, um, um, for instance, Beryl's character is quite she's quite an ordinary woman um but we try and make her do extraordinary things you know so that uh you know she is a middle a middle-aged invisible woman um and i start i started making her when i wasn't invisible <laughs> when i was still at college and i've slowly turned into this middle-aged invisible woman so now i really understand what i was doing back then and just trying to trying to make her do these great things that audiences can identify with. So all our films are very well observed and they're all based on observation and real people as well. And, and so I think what we really want is for um, audiences to identify with the characters in the films and to, um, to see things in themselves in the characters and to be with the film. And I think as well, we quite like mixing comedy with not tragedy, but but a darker side as well. So, um, like like Marina, um, we have dead a dead body in ours. You know, the grandma, very similar actually to your film, <laughs> and uh, and you know. So I think sometimes people are a little bit shocked that it goes from funny, some sort of funny thing one minute, and then suddenly there's a, the, the grandmother was there was there a minute ago is suddenly dead on the table. So, um, and we quite like doing that. <laughs> but uh, I think ultimately for me, I do like making people laugh, you know, and I, and especially in this bloody pandemic, it's, it's been nice to create a, a film that people can actually laugh with and, uh, and enjoy and uh, enjoy Beryl, you know, so. <laughs> absolutely the laughs were definitely there and you are absolutely not invisible so just so you know <laughs> um all right well thank you all for sharing that um next i want to shift into and maybe this is more of a process question or it doesn't have to be it could be a personal challenge too so i, I would love to hear from you all what was your greatest challenge in making this film in particular and again take that where you will and let's see, let's start with Marina on this one. Yeah, so for me, I think my, maybe my greatest challenge doing this was uh, dealing with a really lonely process, I think, and uh, trying not to, to be, <clears throat> to be just cut off my, my film because of uh, all the stress of the first professional and personal one. It's always something. And I had to keep the energy up for a long period of time, uh, like trying to have the money to do it and afterward just creating all in a really small team because uh, there were only two of us at the image. I had a friend who was animating for me for one month and after that I was all by myself. <laughs> And uh, I tried to balance uh, the work on this shot with other works I was doing at the time uh, to be able to have money and to live. <laughs> so yeah, for me, that was my, my first real experience of that, but I do it again in, in a quick. So. <laughs> we're, we're all glad you survived that experience. So yeah, yay. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> um, Andrea, talk, talk, to about, talk to us about your greatest challenge on this project. I would say the biggest challenge was that was time um, because this was part of a series of films that were that were made during lockdown and I started making it at the beginning of lockdown at a time when no one really knew how long it was going to last there was this feeling of unless I finish this quickly it could all be it, it won't make sense anymore because this lockdown, maybe it'll last a month only or two months. So in the beginning, I thought I only had maybe a month to make the film and that extended to around two and a half months. And had we known that this lockdown or, you know, like it, that was in June of 2020. And, uh, and then of course it just kept going on. So, so it was time and, and because we were locked down during that time, my, my partner's kids, my stepkids were at home. And so it was just a lot, there was a lot going on and, uh, 
And yeah, so, but, but in the end, you know, you look back and you think, oh, that was just such an amazing time as well. And um, like to be able to have that project during that time and, and creating it. So it's sort of both sides of it. I have really good memories of making it, but uh, at the beginning anyway, a little, a little bit of stress coming out of the gate that it needed to be done quickly. Yeah. Remember when we thought it would only be like a few weeks or a couple months of pandemic? Yeah. Remember that? Wow. Yeah, that was that was a fascinating time. Um, but we're glad that you did use that time to make this film. So even if you had more time than you thought, um, mm -hmm. we're, we're glad you got it out there. Um, so let's let's ask Joanna to share on this one uh, what the greatest challenge was for you. Um, I think the greatest challenge was to stay sane because it took me uh, six years to animate and that was pretty intensive that six years you know it was uh, it was every single day you know working and so um, yeah it, it did go on and on and on it just took so long I don't know why it took so long I mean there were lots of other things happening that uh, it just got spread out um, it took me ages to get the storyboard right so that was very painful um, I think I started to enjoy it when um, more people came on board um, and uh, then it became a much more of a team effort and it became more more fun, you know, less, less torturous. But I think it was really the length of time, especially because I've made films before and people were waiting for it. And it had been such a long time since I made the last film. You know, I was just so embarrassed to keep saying, no, it's not finished yet. It's not finished yet. And then I couldn't actually see when it was going to be finished. So it was hard to keep motivated, I have to say. Um, but having a really supportive team of people around going, come on, we can do it. You know, it became right. We can. And we did eventually. <laughs> but it was the time. Got it. That makes sense. That is a marathon, but. You got to the finish line, so yay, yay, woohoo! All the crowds cheering, love it. Um, Stephanie, tell us about your greatest challenge on your project. Yeah, I think I'm quite lucky because I work with a really small team, but we've been working together on many movies, so in a way it's easier. But to be honest, the always the other part is to find the fundings. Even in film France, we're really lucky; we have a lot of fundings, but. It's getting really, really difficult. Maybe also because we did a lot of movie together with Francois. So now it's a sixth movie and sometimes the people, they don't know why we made so many short films. We should do a feature film or so, something. And yeah, really difficult to, to get the money. And I'm quite worried for the future. I don't know if we can, if we, if we can continue like that, we'll try. Well, we're, we're glad you keep trying and, and whatever length it is, it's worth telling. So, uh, we're to bond, so. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, all right. Well, thank you all for sharing that. Everybody always learns from other people's challenges. So I love asking that question because, you know, some people feel like, oh, I'm never going to get through this. But you know what? You can for that reason and that reason, that reason you can. So wonderful for sharing that. Um, OK, so now we're going to take it into a more personal place and um, I'd love for you to share what you learned about yourself in the making of this film. So let's start on this one with Andrea. Ah, that's, uh, what did I learn about myself? I'm, I mean, one of the things I really learned about as far as being an animator or, or doing animation um, is that I, for me, what I love about it is the process of discovery and invention. I, I don't think I could do, I, I mean, a friend of mine recently asked me if I storyboarded and I finally had to admit that I don't storyboard. That for me, I start somewhere and then end somewhere else entirely. And what keeps me engaged is that process of discovery along the way. So the, I think that's what I discovered that I'm just, at least right now in, in how I wanna tell stories, I don't think I'll be that kind of animator that plans everything out ahead of time. And, and it actually makes it difficult to bring other people on in a way because I'm constantly shifting gears and um, you know I, I just don't know what's going to be up next. Uh, 
but uh, but somehow I I think it can work. Um, yeah, I think that's what I learned. But it, that being said, I don't I I would never sign myself up for every project being like that. It's just this project I I really could identify with that. Got it. I would think every project experience is unique in, in, in what you go through based on your life and your time and all kinds of circumstances, but that's good recognition you had there. Um, Joanna, how about you? What did you learn about yourself in this, in this project? Um, I, I learned that uh, I'm very patient and that uh, <laughs> I can keep going for many years. Um, but a couple of things that I did learn is that a lot of Les's writing included a lot of lip sync. And, uh, and at the beginning I was going, oh no, this film's gonna take long enough as it is, let's avoid lip sync, you know, perhaps she could have her hand over her mouth or, you know, I was trying to think of all like clever ways of avoiding lip sync. <laughs> and on a couple of the scenes, it, it was unavoidable. So I did lip sync and then I discovered I love doing lip sync. So, um, and of course it's all about acting. And, and then I got obsessed with doing all the lip sync scenes. So that was really good fun. And I also discovered that I really enjoy directing and um, working with people because we didn't have a very strict deadline. It wasn't, we didn't have a deadline. That's why it went on for six years. <laughs> But, you know, but the positive side of that was it enabled the people who were very young um, on our team to learn. You know, it was a bit like extended college. We were all learning. And that was really lovely as well, having having the space to explore stuff and try stuff out uh, um, and, you know, being prepared to fail and then redo it and try it again. And so so that was really, really nice. Yeah, so I think probably learn, learning that I love direction, learning that I love lip sync and performance and learning that I, well, I knew I liked teaching, but uh, um, realizing that I really do like teaching as well. That's wonderful. That sounds like a good combination there. <laughs> That's great. And, and, you know, we always believes in like uh, mentorship and teaching the next generation and all that. So it's wonderful that even on a short film project, which often is a one woman show, you had some space for that. So yeah. that's wonderful that you could incorporate that as well. So great. And Stephanie, tell us in your process, what did you learn about you? Mm, I maybe realized that this movie is part of a global, global work that I started a long time ago and it's important to be coherent and I think the most important is to be true and to be sincere. Even if sometimes you got some pressure to do, tell you to do like this, like that. I think it's difficult, but you have to, to realize that you don't, you don't have to please the audience. It's difficult, but you have to, if you want to do your own stuff, you really have to follow your line and I mean, Everybody want to be loved and everybody want this movie to be loved. But when you're making it, you have not to think about that too much. That's an excellent point. Staying focused, staying in your vision, yeah, yeah. your tunnel. <laughs> yes, no, I think that's great. Um, and Marina, let's, let's hear from you what, what you learned about yourself on your project. I think the, the most thing I learned during this project was to to listen and to trust my instincts, actually, because um, lots of the time I'm just really um, trying to put everything at the right place and um, thinking about everything. And I, I'll hear for some part of the movie uh, where really written before, but I really enjoyed having the second part of the movie um, a lot of freedom with it and it was an opportunity for me to to play with it and to try something else and it was really at the end of the production so I was living with the movie for some time at this at this moment and I thought it was a great way to to end the production of the movie before the sound and also that I really wanted to have a real silence in the movie 
And uh, it was quite difficult to, to say to, uh, at the beginning to my producer, to the composers, to all the staff in the music and sound departments that I really wanted to have this uh, long silence at the end, but uh, I, I, uh, I stay with it, <laughs> I stood with it. And at the end, everybody was happy with that, uh, thinking that it really uh, gives something else at the end of the movie. So yeah, trust your instincts. <laughs> Yeah, I, I could see that would be a difficult conversation to have with a composer. No, nothing. Yeah. Helen, no. no. Mm. So, um, Everybody will think that there's a, a technical issue or yeah, something. What, <laughs> check the theater, check my computer, what's happening? Uh, no, but that that is a really good example of staying true to your vision. This is what we're doing. So good. Well, thank you for, for sharing that. Um, all right. So let's think now like you know what, what i hear from from you all is you know every every opportunity is an opportunity for growth and evolution and and it's so nice that you you share it talking about it, but also in what the final film is so so let's take that to the next step so based on this production or maybe a past experience those of you that have done other films how has your process of bringing your film concept to reality changed there's something you've learned. How has that changed your process? So this one, let's see if uh, Stephanie wants to share first. Yeah, at the beginning, I was really, really scared to write scenario. I always start by the images, maybe because I study in a art school. So it was kind of natural for me, but more and more I enjoy writing and I don't like drawing anymore. So it's kind of funny. And also in the technical process, we, we had to change some stuff because we, as we're living so, sometime in Vietnam, sometime in France, and we want, wanted to be able to, to bring the work with, with us and also we're traveling a lot. So we, at the beginning, we were doing uh, animation by hand a lot and we use a computer more and more. So it's easier to be nomad and bring the work. That's what we change the most, I think. Yeah, that's a great point, being able to work from anywhere. <laughs> uh, uh, Andrea, how about you? What have you changed or would you change in your process moving forward? I, I mean, it, it relates a little bit to the last answer I had where it, um, I think because every time I, I start a film, I, I learn something new, I try something new and, um, I think it's just that it's the freshness that I really like engaging with. And, and so I think I'll, I'll just continue to approach films that way. And again, probably I'll have different looks and different use different mediums and, and nothing will seem really that polished or accomplished because I feel like a beginner every time I make a film. Um, and uh, and it just I think it affirmed that I I don't mind that that I that I actually like that being part of the process the discovery aspect. Yeah, that's that's a wonderful realization. The freshness and the discovery is that energy for you. That's great, um, Joanna. How about you? Share with us what what you might have changed or what you might change going forward or not. I don't know. You've got a lot of experience to share. Well, I've been drawing all my films and I'm still drawing on paper uh, so actually my technique hasn't changed much except that I now uh, scan the drawings into a computer and color using tv paint and using after effects instead of a big fat rostrum camera mm -hmm. and uh, so in that way it hasn't changed I did try and animate on tv paint for about six months but um, it made me realize that I just love the the actual drawing process on paper. I just love pencil on paper and I was really missing that. And also I think um, I like I like the immediacy of a, a, a pencil on paper because you haven't got any choices, you know, you just got a pencil. Whereas when you do digital animation, you've got lots of choices and lots of decisions to make before you make a line. And I found, I found that it, it inhibited my animation and it became less free. Going forward, what I would like to do is to try and get back the um, freedom and lack of fear 
that I had in my first film, Girls' Night Out, because the one thing when you make lots and lots of films, you know, you uh, you know more, you know, <laughs> and I think you might get stuck in a rut a little bit. And uh, and then when I look at Girls' Night Out that I made when I was 19 or 20 and think I had no idea what I was doing. You know, I just threw it all together somehow and that you can see it it's got that energy and I, I and it all just came together and so um you know I want to go back to that I want to try and get that that energy in the way that like Picasso is always trying to get you know the the, the feeling of be- children's wonderful innocent drawings uh so I think that's what I'm I'm I want to go opposite of polished <laughs> and more expressive that is a great uh, realization, and, and I wish you good luck doing that in your next one. That's amazing. <laughs> um, so, Marina, this being your first one, I don't know, like you've got a lot of opportunities here. So share share with us, what do you think you learned or how will you change your process rather going forward? Um, for me, I really want to explore more of the notion of automatic writing because I find it quite fun to explore. and. And I did something on this movie and I really want to explore that as well is uh, after I did the automatic writing of all the voiceover, uh, I was stuck with uh, how to storyboard the film. So I did uh, automatic drawings for several weeks and I did hundreds and hundreds of drawings. And I, I think that's quite refreshing not to know what to expect of the experience and just be, be just to, to, to have some different materials to go with and, uh, and uh, to be surprised by it. So I think that's the thing I want to explore more. And, uh, and I have to keep doing that on uh, traditional techniques with paper because as well as Joanna, I think I really enjoy it so much. I really need to be in contact with the material so it's quite important for me to stay sane <laughs> during the making of the film so uh, that that is true we need you to be sane enough to finish it and get it out there and share yes that's a good realization so having you amazing women together here um i, I want to give you space if you have questions for each other because you may never be in the same room again so it looks like Joanna has a question. Joanna, go I, ahead and ask that. I have a question because I've seen all your movies and they're all wonderful. And I just want to ask, because they're all so different. The, 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 and I just wanted to ask about the techniques, how you how you all work. That would be good to know. That's great. Well, let, let's pick someone to start with. Let's, let's ask Stephanie to chime in on that. Uh, my work is a mix of uh, video and uh, photography with uh, drawing on the computer. And and what what um what software do you use? Uh, After Effects. Ah right. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. some kind of two D, but it looks like three D, but it's not actual three D. And the drawing, <laughs> uh, when when you say you sort of mix the media, what what what? How do you do the drawing? On um, After Effects. Uh, on After Effects and uh, Photoshop too. Yeah. Ah, right. With the um, yeah the mask mask techniques. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, text uh, texture too. Yeah. Oh, it looks fantastic. Thanks. <laughs> so now I did that. I pressed the mute when I shouldn't have. Andrea, tell, tell, us, <laughs> tell us about, answer, go ahead and answer that for Joanna. That'd be great. Um, my film is really old school, and I feel like you could probably just tell by looking at it. It, I drew directly into books. Because it was the lockdown, I could. it was going to take me weeks and weeks to get animation paper so then I thought well I have all these old books I'll animate in the books because books are just natural flip books and so Mm -hmm. I um so I so I drew I I looked I had um what is that program called it's really stop motion frame dragon frame dragon frame yeah. yeah and so I had that the computer looking at me and I draw in the books and look in the computer and then flip it and use the onion skin and draw that over top so I so that's how I did the um 
the flip book look. And then every once in a while, because it was taking so long, I'd intersperse it with stop motion. So then I'd abandon that if I could, if it made sense for the story and then introduce paper cut out stop motion and tried to have like a, a sort of color palette that was consistent to keep both of those elements um, in sort of dialogue with each other. And, um, and because I was, there was no editing because I just, it's chronological and I had the poem in the, the stop motion software, like Dragon is such a great program. Like it's so easy to use. And so I just had it underneath. And so I'd hear where I was at in the poem. And then when I got to the end, it was just done. And there's uh, nothing else, like no other. Um, I did have to put it together in Premiere Pro just to properly have the, um, uh, I guess, the audio. And but because the titles were a part of it, it's just very simple. I was I wasn't sure whether you actually drew in the books or whether, yeah, you all everything digitally now. Whether you kept your books pristine and did oh, it. Oh, I know, but I'm not. like. I'm like you and Marina, I just really want to touch the materials and, <laughs> and um, yeah, I mean, I have, I have done also a bit of TV paint and tablet and I just don't like it at all. I, uh, I keep coming back to the handmade and that's so ironic now, nobody can tell, like people will be like, oh, well, you must've done that digitally. And it's like, <laughs> no, I have like 20 books now, a huge stack. <laughs> and it's uh, so conversely, like Stephanie would not be dragging those 20 books around the world back and forth <laughs> no, between no. France and Vienna. So, so no. it's wonderful how you can all make the most of, of <laughs> where you're at and how you want to create. So well, I had uh, no choice either. It was in the lockdown time. No, nope, you were there. No, nope, you made the most of that. And uh, Marina, I think uh, you need a chance to answer this question of Joanna's as well. Yeah, so for, for me, um, we did the animation on TV Paint uh, the, for the big movement and the camera, all traditional animation on TV paint. And after that, I printed the drawings and uh, I did uh, some work on uh, with oil pastels on paper. So there were four steps to each drawings to put the yellow into it and then scratch the yellow to, to have my line coming out and doing all the little shading after that. <laughs> it wow. was not the really <laughs> great process to do it quickly, but <laughs> it was kind of fun. And, uh, and for the second part, um, I took some pictures to have some references. And after that, I just uh, did some drawings, like drawings with charcoal, so. Very beautiful. That's great. And how, how long did it so take? Uh, to write it or to, to... To do the artwork. To do the artwork. Uh, I think it was uh, almost two years mm -hmm. uh, with 400 oil pastel <laughs> going into the process. Wow. But uh, it was two years on and off because I was working on other projects at the same time. So maybe it's, uh, it's less than that, but it was two years doing uh, the animatic, the animation on TV paint and after the drawings on paper. Oh, well, you can have a lovely <laughs> exhibition of all those drawings. Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask where all the drawings are now. So, yeah. Inboxes, like everyone. <laughs> that happens. And yeah. And what about what about the books and, and Joanna, your your drawings? Where's everything? Where's your archives, everybody? I, I, I'm, I'm in charge just... of archives for women animation. So if you're not properly taking care of it, I'm going to say, send it to us. We will preserve it for Ooh, you. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, I've got seriously. mounds of boxes. I've got boxes and boxes. So I, we don't know what to do with them all, actually. We've got so much artwork. Okay, well, I do hope that you all do something to preserve this because this is important for the future. You're, this is history you're making, literally. So anyway, okay. So maybe we have time for one more question within the group, if you have it. If you don't, that's okay. So if anybody's dying to ask a question, just, just wave or, or put your little hand up or something and, and we'll jump into that. But if not, I, I have one more question. No, go ahead, Marina, go. <laughs> ask the question of the group or specific person. It's a quick one, but just have you some new projects going on? Or 
or is it a secret or something? But I'd <laughs> like to know if you are currently working on some other things. <laughs> That's an excellent question. Let's let's ask Stephanie. What, what's going on with you, Stephanie? Oh yeah, many, many projects. I don't know if I, we have time to <laughs> make it all. <laughs> Maybe three or four short movie and one feature or two, but I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Exciting that you have options there. That's good. Oh. That's great. Uh, Andrea, how about you? I, uh, yeah, like um, Stephanie, I have a lot of different projects and different stages, but the project I'm currently working on is another animated film. Um, it's called Hairy Legs and it's about a girl who realizes like, why am I shaving my legs? And uh, yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm working on. That is an excellent question. I want to hear the answer to that because, man, we spend a lot of time doing that. Some of us do. Anyway, okay. Joanna, what about you? Um, we're nothing. We're thinking of ideas at the moment and just recovering, really, after making that film. <laughs> I think six years, you, you, get, you get a reprieve here. You do. You really do. So, yeah. I'm, I'm catching up with my hoovering. Yes. Well, that, that uh, you know. Yeah, that'll always be there, but still, I hope you're doing other fun things also. Um, yeah. So Marina, why don't you answer the question as well? Tell, tell us where you're at. Uh, I'm currently thinking about a new, uh, a new short film and I do lots of, uh, um, I, I help other people with their projects and uh, especially with writing their scenarios with students and with professional uh, one. And I am, uh, co-writing an adaptation uh, of a feature film uh, based on uh, Quentin Blake's and Johnny O'Malley's uh, book for children called The Hermit and the Bear. We'll see if it mm -hmm. works. Wonderful. You've got a lot going on there. Many plates, different plates you're spinning. Very exciting. All right. Well, as we come to the end of our time together, I, I always love asking for you to share with our audience, what advice you have for other creators who want to put a team together or want to endeavor to do this by themselves, or, or you know, what what advice do you have for for independent filmmakers? Really, is what what I'm asking. So, let's let Joanna start with that answer. Hmm. Gosh. Um. Maybe just try and just try and keep everything small and simple don't think too big because uh, then you get bogged down with all sorts of stuff um uh, uh you know i think like a lot of students leave college and want to set up a company and get work and stuff which is fine but then i think i think if you are setting a com up a company um build it around a project, you know, get, get the money, get the creative side sorted before you start thinking about the business side, because otherwise you'll be doing stuff to pay for your rent and, and you won't be doing what you really love to do, you know, end up doing stuff for money. So um, yeah, and to um, just try and be original, uh, because we do observational work, you know, yourself, your own stories are the best stories, because um, they're your stories, and that, that's what people want to hear you know original stories you might think they're boring and um because you're living them but i believe me you know no two people are the same so keep it keep it original keep it personal and uh keep it small <laughs> that sounds like all very sound advice thank you for sharing uh andrea what do you think what would you give for advice oh you're on mute Somebody has to do that on every. I just page. mute. I just I know. Mute it myself. Anyway, yeah. I I would say just um, that's first of all that's such good advice uh, that Joanna said just to start small, and I would I would say the same thing. Just start, um, yeah, start small. And I'm going on the other side where which isn't involving a team or um, maybe even no funding in the sense that animation, the beauty of it is you can teach yourself and you can make something out of nothing. And so I would just encourage people to experiment and to start and see where it takes you. And it's not something that you even need to go to school for. There are so many tutorials online and um, to just play and, and see if you like it from, from there. 
because uh, I know a lot of people come out to these to film festivals to just just for the love and, and enjoyment of watching films. And if it's something you love, you might want to do it. So just just try it out. That's wonderful advice. Thank you for sharing that. Now, Stephanie, what do you have for advice to share? It's pretty difficult now. They say all the good good stuff already. <laughs> That's okay. You can second it. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, I would say uh, keep it small. It's important to work with people you trust, and it's really long, so you have to be really patient too. And yeah, just just go on and take risk and don't be scared. Excellent thoughts. Yes, great sharing. So, Marina, what would you share for advice? Same thing. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> else, but. I think yeah, don't be, don't be afraid of failure. I think is a big one. Uh, to try to experiment and to see what's coming. And uh, the most in important thing for me is make it personal. Don't be afraid to to go deep and be sincere. And I think that's a sure way to connect with people. So, yeah. <laughs> that's wonderful. That's great sharing. Well, with that, I think we will we will wrap up our time together today. And I just want to say thanks to everyone for joining us today and for, for <laughs> logging into the Animation is Film Festival and participating in, in watching this special collection of films by our, our wonderful women fil uh, filmmakers today. Um, I want to say I, I wish all of you watching continued health and happiness out there in the world and to lovely filmmakers. We wish you continued success with sharing your voices so well with the world, however you do it. So thank you all. And I hope everyone has a great rest of the time at the festival. Thank you. We'll say thank bye you now. very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs>